you are just joining us today on Bridges, Sue Detweiler is my guest, and we're talking about her not-for-profit ministry and her husband's life bridges and also Christian Mom Talk, and then a women's conference that will be coming right here to our community very shortly. We were talking a little bit, Sue, about life bridges and how it really works, the ministry, to connect people uh, with purpose and to yes. fill in gaps that we yes. experience in life in a fallen world. And I know, in fact, the way that I originally became acquainted with you was through your radio program, Christian Mom Talk. I would love to hear about that because all moms, most yes. of us anyway, we need and want help. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly right. You know, in the heart of beginning Christian Mom Talk was not because I felt like I was a perfect mom. That's good. You know, <laughs> or that I have a perfect family. Because we would all be intimidated. <laughs> It's, it's really the opposite. Mm -hmm. I mean, becoming a mom was one of the hardest things that I experienced in my life. Yeah. I went through just a, a trauma. Uh, I had a beautiful baby, but when she was five weeks old, um, our next door neighbor's house was set on fire by an arsonist. Oh and my daughter and I were caught in the fire. And so she was five weeks old, and um, someone had uh, woken her up by pounding on her window. The alarm didn't go off, so I, I don't think I would be alive. And basically what happened is I heard her screaming, and I couldn't get to her. Couldn't find her way. I got caught in a closet. I didn't even know the house was on fire. I was so disoriented. And, and being in that place, you know, of... The one prayer I had is the prayer that everybody has at yeah. that point, help. Yeah. And by the grace of God, my husband got home in time. And he got the firemen, you know, the house that was under construction was already burned to the ground. Ours was in flames. And my husband brought a fireman in. And in that, he came in and you would think I would be able to see that big flashlight. Mm -hmm. It was like a pin light. And I, I didn't even see his face. I just heard his voice come towards the light. And so we, by the miraculous grace of God, got out of that fire. We got to the hospital. My mom had been praying for us mm -hmm. from Isaiah 43. You'll go through the fire and you'll not be burned. And that it was a life-changing moment because of the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. But also, it set in motion just a crisis in our lives. So if you can imagine being a mom, and now you have no place to live. No, You don't have any diapers. You no. don't have a crib. And you are you the pastor. You don't have anything comfortable. You I don't, know. Yeah, and you, you're the pastor, so we're you don't pastors. have anybody to call. We don't have anybody. No, you're it. We're it. it uh, no, I can't, I can't imagine. I can't imagine the fear of not being able to get to my five-week-old child, of feeling so disoriented that I can't really see the light. I, the panic. Yes. Because uh, I would yes. think as a mom that there would come a point that you really don't even care about yourself, but you, you want your kid. That was exactly yeah. it. Yeah. That, that desperation. And, and then it, it's not like it got easier. It got harder. You're dealing with the insurance company. And then my baby developed colic where here we are in a, a you know, a rented place. <laughs> And she's screaming nonstop for three oh. hours. This went on for the first, I don't know, three months of her life. And I understand the trauma of what am I going to do? I remember at one point I was so shaken that I, I laid her down, I backed away, and I'm like, I have got to get out of here. And by the grace of God, I called a neighbor and I said, can you take my baby? I, I'm overwhelmed. And, and then I went out and I came back. And I just understand yeah. when moms are at that point. Yeah. And I think that it's know? so important that you say that because I think uh, one of the things that Christian Mom Talk does is help be real and genuine yes. with people. Because sometimes people portray being a Christian parent is that everything is really just easy and we <laughs> say a prayer and amen and the children are good. But there are moments, so there are young moms that are watching right now yeah. who... 
they wish that they could call a neighbor to say, watch my baby for five minutes. Yes. And, and, and they don't have any neighbor. Yes. And so they or feel... They, they don't have the courage right, to ask yeah, for help. And they feel like they're uh, a horrible Christian girl, a horrible Christian young woman, because they can't get the baby to stop crying and they uh, are having a difficult time in their marriage. And, and see, the enemy uses those things to destroy our lives and make mm -hmm. us play with our thoughts to make us think we're awful. Mm -hmm. When if we just share that every mother... Mm -hmm has thought, mm -hmm. if I don't get out of here, <laughs> I am going crazy. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and going along, it's, there are all sorts of things are hard. I know, same child, she got to about one years old, she got kicked out of Mother's Day Out. <laughs> Have you ever known a baby to get kicked out of Mother's Day Out? Just one. Yeah. <laughs> she bit another baby and drew blood. And so, I remember coming home, wonderful Mother's Day out. It was at a church, but it was like, that was my break. That was my reprieve. My family didn't live near me at that point. And it was like, God, help me. And, and that's when there's a, there's a pastor in town named Jerry Bryant. And he had come to do a, a conference for us. And he just prayed for me, and he spoke wisdom into me. At that point, I didn't want any more children. I was like, this is it, one's enough. I'm not sure I wanted one to begin mm -hmm. with. That's how I felt. And now, yeah, it's it, and we can be honest. And now, look, yeah. my kid gets kicked out of Mother's Day. <laughs> you know, I what mean, hello. I yeah. I'm not a good mom, yeah. I'm a terrible mom, Everybody I'm the worst mom. Everybody else's kids get stars, and, yes. and, and you know, people tell you if you just yes. try harder and you pray more and you do blah, blah, it gets tiring. Yes. yes. Well, this wise pastor said to me, he said, I really believe that God is saying to you to open up your heart that he wants to give you more children. And that is exactly how I reacted. But you know when you know it's God's yeah. will for you. Mm -hmm. And really, at that point, I sensed that God had a call on my life mm -hmm. as a mom. It wasn't something that I wanted or chose or preferred. Mm -hmm. But it was something where obeying the voice of God, and one at a time now, four biologically, and now three that we adopted. Now we have seven, seven children. children. <laughs> oh, my goodness. For a woman who wasn't sure she wanted any, and then got one and thought, I don't know about this. And now God has a sense got, of humor. He does. And, he's, and now you've got seven children, and now this outreach Christian mom talk to help talk to moms, yes. real people who yes. love their children. Yes. And more than likely, probably love God and have yes. a measure of faith in their life. And they're, they're Christian moms. We, we yes. want to do the right thing. It's just that sometimes life is so very hard. Yeah. And there's gaps yeah. in their understanding. Mm -hmm. And they need a bridge to be able to understand even how to walk in the presence of God while they're changing diapers. Absolutely. And dishes to be done, yes. and kids that yes. won't cooperate, and messes, and you're trying to do, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, you're just trying to live a good, honest life before the yes. Lord. So this is part of what Christian Mom Talk does.